Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we're really going to try to figure out the effectiveness of carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas in conjunction with all the other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, of course, especially water vapor, since that's the main contributor to the greenhouse effect. So the total greenhouse effect, all gases combined, is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit or about 33 degrees centigrade, which means that without any of the greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, it would be about 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees centigrade cooler in the Earth on average as compared to with the greenhouse gases. That's a huge difference, an enormous difference. And then the question is, what percentage of this increase is due to carbon dioxide? Well, there's a lot of different ways to look at that. It's not as simple as that. But let's say we take a look at what carbon dioxide is able to absorb, and we've had a number of videos now that explain that in very good detail, if we ignore all the other greenhouse gases and just concentrate on that main band that carbon dioxide can absorb around the 15 micrometer wavelength, then we realize about 18% of all the radiation can be absorbed by carbon dioxide, which means that that's an increase of about 10.6 degrees Fahrenheit or about 6 degrees centigrade. So that's a significant contribution due to carbon dioxide. But then we realize that's not the whole picture because there's an overlap between carbon dioxide and water vapor. Carbon dioxide is not responsible for all, all that absorption because water vapors has already absorbed a vast amount of that. So when we look at the overlap and we realize there's a big overlap between carbon dioxide and water vapor, at 285 parts per million, the contribution alone, that's, that slice there, that was not able to be absorbed by water vapor that we saw in the previous video, that accounts for about 6.45% of all the radiation absorbed by all the gases, which means an increase of about 3.8 degrees Fahrenheit or 2.1 degrees centigrade. That's a far smaller number. Now, we've had some significant increases in the levels of carbon dioxide, so what would happen if the levels were to double from the pre-industrial numbers of 285 parts per million all the way up to about 570 parts per million? Well, that percentage increase would then, of course, go up because water vapor would still presumably stay the same. And of course, that's again not the whole picture because we assume that with increased temperatures and increased carbon dioxide, water vapor would probably increase as well. So we'll take a look at that later. But if we ignore that for now, the increased contribution would go from 6.5% to about 7.1% for an increase of 4.2 degrees Fahrenheit or 2.3 degrees centigrade. So basically, almost a half degree Fahrenheit increase for a doubling of the carbon dioxide if we only take into account the additional energy that would be absorbed radiated from the surface of the Earth and no other factors involved. So we're just kind of slicing and dicing it to get a good picture of full understanding. So what this means is that carbon dioxide on its own does not appear to be increasing the temperature by that much as compared to water vapor that accounts for at least 90% of the total greenhouse gas effect, which is the main greenhouse gas that keeps us nice and warm and livable on the Earth. So this is the presumed contribution based upon studies analysis of what carbon dioxide absorbs in addition to what the water vapor already absorbs and then if, it were, if the concentrations were then to double from 285 to 570 parts per million that would then increase from about 6.5% to about 7.1% for an increase of almost a half a degree Fahrenheit. And so that is based upon pure analysis of what carbon dioxide is able to absorb ignorant of all other factors of course, those are important as well, and I'm going to look, take a look at those at some later videos, but that's the way it is.